We dream of finding distant worlds full of abundant flora and life, just like here on Earth. The James Webb Space Telescope has now for the first time discovered a real atmosphere on a distant super-Earth. So we could be well on our way to finally exploring a world like ours in the depths of space. But 55 Cancri E presents scientists with a puzzle. The outer world, located only 41 light years from Earth, sometimes looks like super-Earth and sometimes looks like an infernal furnace. But what is true? The James Webb Telescope made amazing discoveries in search of answers to these questions. Scientists are using NASA's new JWST to finally get a close-up look at the Earth-like planet 55 Cancri E with this groundbreaking technique. This exoplanet is Earth's immediate neighbor on a cosmic scale. This world has amazed scientists again and again since its discovery in 2011. At first, the planet appeared to be a warm but rocky world that may have had an atmosphere. But then scientists discovered shocking new information about this planet. Using Webb's unique analysis methods, scientists wanted to finally unravel the mystery surrounding this mysterious planet, and they succeeded. The results are amazing, and Rin Yu Hu, the research manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, was excited. With the help of the James Webb Telescope, we are now entering a whole new dimension of science. For the first time, we know exactly what is going on around exoplanets and even get our first impressions of the planet's surface point 55 Cancri E. Super hot or overground? Can you imagine a boiling hot super-Earth? Probably not, and rightly so, because usually only those planets that offer even better living conditions than our home are called super-Earths. In general, such planets are slightly larger, slightly denser, slightly hotter, and their stars have longer lifetimes than our sun. The first two points applied to 55 Cancri E for a long time. We knew the size, orbit, and approximate density of the planet, but we had no concrete information about the atmosphere, and even the temperatures were only estimates. Never before in the history of astronomy have we been able to study the planets outside our solar system with such precision and detail. Web spectrometers can detect not only water in the planet's environment, but also gases such as methane, carbon dioxide, and other volatile compounds. The more the analytical data of the planet's environment overlap with the values of our Earth, the more certain we have found a true super-Earth.55 Cancri E is one of five known Earth-like planets that orbit the Sun-like star 55 Cancri. The planet is almost twice the diameter of Earth and has a higher density, so it was previously classified as a super-Earth. Previous studies on 55 Cancri E have produced strangely conflicting data. For example, studies by the Spitzer Space Telescope have shown that a planet orbits so close to its star that its surface is likely to be less rocky and more molten. Additionally, the planet's orbit is thought to be tidally locked to day and night. A hypothesized super-Earth could be a scorching hot place with no atmosphere and unable to support life. Scientists have repeatedly accepted this strange world, and experts from the University of New Mexico have now intensively studied 55 forms of cancer for more than 10 years. The researchers describe the fact that none of the observations have yielded clear results so far, completely frustrating. The new telescope should finally illuminate the darkness and reveal the secrets of this planet. Point 55 Cancri E has two atmospheres. Is it possible for a planet to have two atmospheres? Yes, 55 Cancri E once had an atmosphere that was then blown away by its star. It is almost unbelievable that this changing planet simply grew a new atmosphere. The spectroscopic analysis surprised scientists because they had never before had such detailed and comprehensive information about this planet. With the latest data, scientists have been able to accurately reconstruct the atmospheric history of 55 Cancri E, and it is truly strange. Because it is extremely close to its star, the surface temperature of about 2,400 degrees Celsius literally burned off the protective shell. But this exoplanet performed a miracle and simply replaced the original hydrogen and helium atmosphere with a new one. This secondary atmosphere was fantastically formed by the release of gases from the rocky interior of the planet. The high temperature of 55 Cancri E probably caused the formation of a new atmosphere. However, 
The new atmosphere is completely different and consists mainly of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Webb's most accurate spectrometric analysis. I wonder how JWST can detect such details? The light reaching us from 55 Cancri E is so weak that Webb would never be able to take a direct image of this planet. However, the telescope can measure small changes in the light of the system when the planet orbits the star. Data from the MIRI instrument show that the 55 Cancri system is decreasing in brightness as the rocky planet 55 Cancri E moves behind its star. Scientists call this phenomenon a secondary eclipse, and the images in the analysis table show the light curve of the secondary eclipse. During a secondary eclipse, the light reflected or emitted by the planet is blocked so that only the light from the star is measured. By comparing the brightness before and during the eclipse, the amount of light coming from the planet can be separated and analyzed. The data show a clear decrease in brightness due to planetary emissions. An analysis of these emissions showed that the planet has a daytime temperature of approximately 1,540 degrees Celsius, which is much lower than expected and suggests a volatile atmosphere that redistributes energy from day to night. Totally crazy. Life on 55 Cancri? It sounds crazy, but past data from NASA's now-defunct Spitzer Space Telescope has repeatedly shown the presence of an atmosphere with signatures of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. They can be biomarkers and signs of life. But how is it possible for a planet with such extreme surface temperatures to have traces of biomarkers in its atmosphere? Planetary scientist who explained in his article published in the journal Nature that 55 Cancri even showed signs of metallic substances and elements such as silicon, iron, aluminum, and calcium. However, the temperatures are so high that scientists suspect that the source of these traces may be a thin veil of vaporized rock. This raises the fascinating question of whether this planet was once cooler in known biological processes. We know from our solar system that the planets have changed places in the system over millions of years. It is possible that the rocky world 55 Cancri E was once in the habitable zone and only later moved into an orbit that brought it closer to the star and to destructive temperatures. Jupiter also pushes our Mercury closer and closer to the Sun, and some scientists speculate that Mercury may someday orbit further from the Sun. Then it may be that 55 Cancri E once had life. The exoplanet looks more and more like a world of sharp contrasts and a world that has undergone drastic changes. This can be seen not only as a tidally locked track, but mainly in the conflicting measurement results of different telescopes. The first indication of a significant atmosphere came from temperature measurements based on this world's heat emissions. If the exoplanet is really covered in dark molten rock and a thin layer of vaporized rock, the day side should be about 2,200 degrees Celsius hot. However, Webb's MIRI data only showed a temperature of 1,540 degrees Celsius. This may be due to the fact that energy is well distributed between a cool night and a warm day through thermal processes. Lava flows carry heat to the night side, where it is recycled and cooled. However, the simulations show that this effect alone is not sufficient to explain the much lower temperature. When the research team examined additional data from Webb's NERCOM, patterns in the volatile atmosphere emerged again. This is not appropriate for a planet made of vaporized rock. The team led by planetary scientists who concluded that 55 Cancri E has some peculiarity that must be related to the escape of gases from the inside. Thanks to the internet, exploration of this fascinating planet has come a long way, but it is far from over. Real signs of life in space? Are you fascinated by groundbreaking discoveries like 55 on Cancri? Or are you one of those people who would be much more grateful if we could finally prove the existence of real alien life in space? Although we have yet to provide definitive proof, the James Webb Space Telescope has brought us closer to that goal than ever before. In addition to its unprecedented range and sharpness, JWST offers us the opportunity to look at exoplanets up close for the first time. Although some of these planets are huge, they are tiny objects compared to the dimensions of the entire universe. Tracking them for a long time was like looking for a needle in an almost endless haystack. There are now more than 5,000 exoplanets known to us. That's a lot for our science, but not even a handful compared to the actual number of planets. The exact number of Earth-like planets is constantly changing. So far, 
we have a few dozen candidates with Earth-2 prerequisites. Now it's up to Webb to figure out which planets are truly Earth-like and which aren't. Proxima Centauri b is often called the most Earth-like planet. Just four light years away, this planet orbits our nearest star and is in the habitable zone, where conditions are good for liquid water. Our hope of finding life there was extinguished after the star Proxima Centauri directed violent flares at its planet.